Giovanni and I have been living together in Playa del Carmen for the last two and a half years and in that time we've gained a pretty deep understanding of what it's actually like to live here. So in this video we're going to be sharing the pros and cons of living here so we're going to start with the cons. The first con we're talking about is transportation or lack thereof. So basically in Playa del Carmen in particular you've only got the option of the combis which is the local transportation or taxis. There's no Uber or any kind of service like that available here. The issue is that in the last few years, Playa del Carmen and the Riviera Maya has seen a massive influx of people coming to live here and people coming to travel here. And it just feels like they are not able to keep up with the demand of all the people. In the past, it was quite easy for us to get into the public transportation, the combis or collectivos here in our neighborhood. And it wasn't enough, like we were not waiting that long, but now we're waiting up to one hour to get into our public transportation to go to central area. To get a taxi because of the tourism here, the, all the taxis are just focused in the touristic areas and they're actually forgetting about the local. Because we've got a lot more to show you that's actually in the central area, we're actually waiting for a colectivo now. So we're about to hop onto one of those and we'll see you on the other side. We find when people move to Mexico, they move for one of two reasons. Sometimes the reasons coincide. To marry the Mexican. Exactly, to marry a Mexican, number one, no. Number one, it's a very affordable country to live in, so you'll find a lot of retirees, a lot of digital nomads. Number two, because people have like a genuine love for the country. If you fall into that bucket and you actually want to come to Mexico to experience authentic Mexico, this is not the place for that. It is super, super commercialized all along the Riviera Maya here. What it feels like is a kind of picked and chosen certain aspects of Mexico and made it into like this commercialized inauthentic thing. It's yeah. just not an authentic experience here. A lot of people move to the Riviera Maya to be in the Mexican Caribbean, which of course means that you have access to Caribbean beaches all year round. But there's actually something to consider. According to our experience living here in Playa de Carmen over the last few years, the seasons of spring and summer are the most affected with this brown um, algae called sargassum. Because of the sargassum that Giovanni just mentioned, you don't actually have year-round beach access. When the sargassum is really bad, it is that bad that you can barely get into the water. And if, even if you do get into the water, the sargassum can actually be quite um, itchy and it really doesn't smell now. So it's not an overall like good experience of swimming in the ocean. So if you're moving here for year-round beach access, this is probably not the place to, to come. Weather in this region can be very extreme. During the months of summer, it's where you can experience the hottest and the most humid uh, weather-wise here in the Riviera Maya. So hot Something that you have to keep it in mind is the hurricane season. At least for the past few years, we've been living here in Playa del Carmen. We have experienced two hurricanes with no major damage. However, if you were to experience one uh, category five hurricane, you might expect to have like water and power outage for a, for a few days. Sorry, my love, to be late. You know MST. Not know MST. The way Mexicans just run on MST like it's, like it's nothing is something that's taken a little bit of time to get used to. Even going to wedding, something as important as a wedding, like it's, it's fine, like it's normal if you're late, like whatever. It's just when you're there, you're there. I don't, I don't even know if a wedding, if like the, uh, if they're married yet. It uh, seems like we're a little bit on the late side just understand that it's part of the culture so if you plan to meet with someone here in Mexico like Giovanni who was just 45 minutes late for me don't take it personally it's just the culture something that I've really struggled with since we've moved here is having a lack of access to very specific products and specific candy but now specifically mm -hmm. talking I have curly hair so I need curly specific shampoos and conditioners which I can't find in the general grocery stores here and they are not like specialized stores either for that kind of thing there is always Amazon however Amazon America typically won't deliver to to Mexico and even if they do the delivery charges are astronomical sometimes at like $40 a piece which is just insane and then Amazon Mexico tends not to carry the those very specialized products. As you can see, it's all just like the very basic commercialized stuff. We've got like a whole section of head and shoulders there. It's I, just, yeah. I can actually wash my, my hair with dishwashing liquid or even for my skin. And that's why you sometimes look like Jojo Jorge Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the Simon's number one complaints since we arrived to Mexico. 
the lack of chocolate, the good chocolate. Simon doesn't like the chocolate here for some reason. In South Africa, snacks are a huge part of our culture and we've got really good candy and chocolates and potato chips and we've just got such a beautiful variety and I find here in Mexico where most of their candy is coated in chili or it's lime flavored or it's tamarind. Oh. Everything is tamarind flavor. I don't like it. If I really wanted to get some something that I'm used to, say for example like Cadbury chocolate, you can find it very very rarely in some of the big supermarkets. It's like five times the price of what it should be. Um, other than that, ordering online potentially but again it's a very expensive process to get candy outside of what you would typically find in the local supermarkets. Well, I grew up in Playa del Carmen. I, what I have as a memory of this town is that it was a lovely beach town. People were friendly and mostly they were very honest. But with expansion of tourism, this has changed so, so much. We don't want to be negative. We just want to express our honest opinion. And really, people here in Playa del Carmen and the Riviera Maya really are not very friendly because of like the scams and all of that, they're not very honest. It's very, very common to get ripped off even as a local here, um, which is really sad to see because Giovanni and I have done a fair bit of traveling all around Mexico. Nothing makes me happier than seeing the real true essence of Mexico when you arrive in a little pueblo or maybe a, a city that's just not as populated by like tur tourism. you know tourism and whatever. The people are really warm and welcoming and friendly and they're so happy to have you there. And it's just a completely different vibe. Coco fresco, fresh coconut. Perfect. Hola. Hola. Perfect. Hola Coca-Cola. Hola Coca-Cola. Coca Something you would probably think about when you think of Mexico is the quality of water. Quality of water in Mexico is really bad. Last time I checked it was one of the worst in the entire world. Uh, basically, you didn't know that, yeah, that. it was it was the statistic I looked up. Basically, the way I've seen this affect me personally is with my hair. So I once upon a time had curly hair, and in the last two years of living here, I've seen a major decline in the health of my hair, and that is basically just due to the constant washing with this very hard water. So unless you have got a big budget to invest in a high quality water filter, it is going to have an effect on your hair and your skin. Following what Simone was mentioning about the water, water in the Riviera Maya is not safe to drink. It's not life threatening, but what we actually do and we can recommend, it's buying the big bottle of water or garrafones, how it's commonly known. Or if you are thinking about more like in the future, you can allocate some budget into like a water filter, which it will make your life easier instead of buying garrafones every day. Um, yeah. Because the Riviera Maya as a whole is expanding so rapidly in terms of development, there is an, there's basically not enough like water pressure to go around. So we find a lot of the time we just very simply won't have water for days on end because they're allocating that water to other parts of Playa del Carmen where we are specifically where they're like putting up development. So we've had actually had to invest a little bit of money to resolve that issue because we were literally going for three, four days without any running water, which obviously is not okay. It's not acceptable, especially in this weather. What we did is just investing in a pump that actually pumps water into our tank that sits on top of our, our house. Basically, uh, we connect this every, every second day and we make sure we have our tank filled for the days where there is no running water in the neighborhood. As digital nomads, specifically as people who upload videos to the internet, the internet that we've been using is has really been a nightmare. Like it, it really is very patchy on and off, whatever. We've literally been waiting months and months for them to install fiber and they have been doing it over the last few months, but it looks like it's, it's getting close to being complete, which is excellent news for us. What you just saw was filmed a few months ago. The company came, mapped out everything here in the in our neighborhood, but it doesn't make any difference. I mean, just the difference that it's fiber optic uh, side as we, what we had that was a satellite. Our upload speed is very bad if you are thinking to come here and work as a digital nomad because teaching English online or uploading videos or sending big files it's hardly it's hardly impossible it works but it's it very works. slow i mean the download speed it's, it's it's fine you can stream you can watch netflix or any other platform and what we found is that there are some internet companies available in some neighborhoods but they're not available in other neighborhoods so our experience of our specific neighborhood is that we can't find anything that is suitable for our needs as digital nomads, but that's not to say that another neighborhood that you might move to might have a better, a better service provider, but that's 
Really just luck of the draw, to be honest. Giovanni and I are currently on the mission to visit all 32 states of Mexico. And while we do that, we're going to be sharing what it's like to live and travel in Mexico. So if you're interested in Mexico at all, please consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Now that we've got all the bad stuff out the way, we're getting into all the things that we love about living here. Something that definitely makes moving to this region of Mexico a lot easier is the fact that English is pretty widely spoken. You definitely don't need to be fluent in Spanish to move here. So what name am I going to make, you know? Give me your no, name no, no, and... We need, we need to think about it. We need to talk about it amongst each other. I mean, we've been living here for two years already. And to be honest, I haven't put myself in many social situations to learn too much Spanish yet. It's very bad, I know, but I'm getting there slowly but surely. But I would feel confident to go off by myself and I, I know I would get by just with the basic Spanish that I have. Hola, buenas tardes. Uh, ¿Qué tienes? Uh, uh, torta con una torta de milanesa, por favor. Okay, gracias. Earlier, Giovanni touched on hurricanes and the extreme summer, which are real things here in this region. But on the other hand, if you think of the weather as a pro, if you are looking to move to a tropical climate, this is the perfect place to come. I mean, you get to wear light breezy clothing, you've got access to, to things like mangoes and avocados, you've got access to the beach, and it's really wonderful. We experience pretty much a year-round summer. Um, but on the other hand, we've also got access to a little bit of a winter, a little bit of a break away from the excessive heat. Over December to January, February, we experience somewhat of a winter where it's just not quite as humid. You've got a little bit more of a breeze. Guys, when we say that it's literally the coldest day of the year, it's not a joke. It is freezing today. For people who live here all year round, it's actually really pleasant to experience a little bit of a winter. The next very important thing to talk about is the safety. Although a lot of people have the perspective that it is very dangerous in Mexico, it really depends on which region you're in in Mexico. This region of Mexico is relatively safe, other than like the pickpocketing and the scamming and, you know, the taxi drivers, those like minor things. We both feel like Playa del Carmen and the Riviera Maya is pretty safe just because of the fact that we're free to walk around at night and we feel pretty confident. We sit in our house all day with the doors wide open and unlocked. So now when it comes to accommodation, you've actually got quite a few options. Just for the sake of making it easily understandable, we've broken it up into kind of like three different sections. So you've got the, the low income housing, which is like really where the locals live. Then you've got like the, the mid income, which is closer to central. And then you've got like the really exclusive stuff, which we'll elaborate on in just a bit. So just to start, we actually live in the real local areas where you will be expecting to pay up about $400 per month for the for, for the rent or the accommodation mm -hmm. and also you have the centro which is closer to the fifth avenue and closer to the beach where prices are about 800 to a thousand even more depending on the type of accommodation yeah and then you've got the real exclusive neighborhood so it's an it's an area called player car and it's like a gated community where people for the most part have like their own freestanding homes which is not something to see very that you see very commonly here in Playa del Carmen and I don't even know what people pay for rent there but that's like real high end of the spectrum here in Playa del Carmen. So you've really got a very good range of stuff, really starting from low budget to high budget. And even it's known that some of the Mexican celebrities have their houses there because, you know, it's very exclusive and they can afford to pay for, for some privacy. Yeah. One of the things I love so much about Mexico is the access to fresh and abundant fresh produce. Fresh, fresh. <laughs> no, seriously though, the, the fresh produce here is incredibly afford affordable. There'll be a fruteria in every single neighborhood and we come literally on a daily basis to pick up some fresh fruit. Right now it's summer, so we've got an abundance of avocados and mangoes and they are excellent. What do you get, my love? I just got a freshly squeezed orange juice and this was 35 pesos. It's amazing how abundant the produce is here. So this is obviously a much deeper topic and we were actually thinking of making a video on our cost of living here in Mexico. Giovanni has been creating a detailed expense list for like the last two years so we have a very accurate understanding of what our expenses are here but just specifically talking about utilities right now our cost of utilities here are like really affordable keeping in mind that we're a couple and we we live and work in our home so we're literally here 24 7 and we are paying roughly 75 us dollars a month for water electricity gas and internet something that we love about living here in the riviera maya is the travel opportunities we have. We can go to Isla Cozumel by just taking a ferry or if we want to go to Cancun we just can take 
one of the collectivos in the highway or if you want to go further we can use one of the red buses called ADO that go all the way down to the south which is like Bacalar, Chetumal or even if you want to go to another state like Yucatan we can even take this bus. Something I would like to add about the ADO buses because we are located in a very touristic area the buses are running pretty much all day and also the rides are pretty affordable. And another quick advantage to add about living in Playa del Carmen is that you're actually only an hour away from the nearest international airport, which would be in Cancun. One of the great things of living here in the Riviera Maya is that you can find street food almost everywhere, in every corner. You can find quesadillas, you can find tortas, you can find so, but you can find a lot of the street food almost at any time during the day. No es para ti. Yeah. Basically, in terms of nightlife, specifically here in Playa del Carmen, there's a lot of like local spots um, that people come to. We like to come to Chapultepec. This is not the main one down at the Fifth Avenue. But if you are looking for more of like a local nightlife scene that definitely exists here, it's quite a bit further away from the Fifth Avenue. But if you're looking for more of like the expat tourist kind of um, nightlife scene, you might have heard of Coco Bongo before. Giovanni and I actually made a full video on the nightlife down at the Fifth Avenue, which you can check out up here or in our bio. And yeah, nightlife is popping here. So if you really are into that nightlife vibe, there is no shortage of that down here in Playa del Carmen. So when it comes to like basic like beauty procedures like waxing and nails and things, if you're going to like the local places, you, you're going to still, I mean, it's still a luxury expense. So I'm paying about 30 US dollars a month for the stuff that I get done. But because we're in like a high expat region, you also get like the very premium skin labs and things like that. And that's if you, if you have the budget for that kind of stuff and if that's the kind of stuff that you often get done. Moving to this region, you are easily going to find that kind of care here because it is such a high expat zone. Everything we just spoke about in this video is obviously down to our own perception of things and we're really curious to know what your opinion of moving to the Riviera Maya is. If there's something that we spoke about that you agree with or you don't agree with, just let us know in the comments. We hope you got valuable information out of this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to don't miss any of our future uploads. That being said, we're gonna see you in the next one. Hasta, Hasta luego! luego. Join us in the next episode where we take you on an adventure around the beautiful island of Isla Mujeres.